You've probably seen ray diagrams of optical systems, microscopes, camera lenses, telescopes. They're typically intuitive to follow, but when you hold up a lens, you don't see the rays that are shown in a ray diagram. So I'd like to give a demo on how to visualize ray diagrams in real life, and then explain in greater detail how to draw them. Ray diagrams are the starting point for analyzing any optical design. Let's start by thinking of a single point of light, like a candle flame in a dark room, with light propagating all around it. You can visualize this spherical wave of light by placing a mask with a small hole over a light source and then running a card in front of it. We model light leaving this point as rays propagating radially in all directions. The rays are perpendicular to these concentric wave fronts. That's one point of light, but usually optical systems image a scene or object. For now, forget about where the light originally comes from, like the sun or an illumination source. Just assume that each point on the object is a single point emitter of light and that the rays are uniformly distributed around the point. I want to start with the simplest ray diagram, a single lens focusing light from an object to form an image. And then I'll build up a demo to see it. Let's start by simplifying the 3D object to a 2D plane. To represent the object, we add point sources over the surface. Points can be drawn on any position on the object and rays can be drawn at any angle. So the challenge in drawing ray diagrams is figuring out which rays to draw to capture the nature of the system. I'm just going to pick two for now. For hand-drawn ray diagrams, it usually only makes sense to use paraxial lenses instead of real lenses with aberrations. Paraxial lenses are ideal and don't exist in the real world, but they can be used to capture the basic function of an optical system, so they usually are the starting point for any optical design. Convex lenses are symbolized with arrows pointing upwards and concave lenses are symbolized with arrows pointing inwards. You can get pretty far with only two rules for drawing rays with paraxial lenses. One, when a ray passes through the center of a lens, it passes through unaltered. Two, rays parallel to the optical axis pass through the optical axis at a distance equal to the focal length. For convex lenses, the ray crosses the optical axis on the other side of the lens. For concave lenses, an imaginary line is drawn on the side of the lens where the rays originated. After drawing a few lines from the point sources, we can already tell where the image will be formed. Remember, even though we only have two point sources here, they represent the rays entering the system from the entire object. We're just excluding them so it isn't too confusing. We can now trace more rays originating from these points and we know that they will all intersect at the image plane. If we check the image distance using the thin lens equation, we can get pretty close to the correct result. There is a caveat. Today there are ray tracing programs like ZMAX and Code5, some free apps as well. These are essential tools and I want to be clear, you should never trust a hand-drawn ray diagram. Weird stuff, impossible stuff can happen. Yet. I still find myself working out ideas by hand, and drawing out rays in the early stages of a design can be helpful for brainstorming or discussing things at a whiteboard. Just check the layout afterwards using some ray tracing software. Ray matrices are also a useful tool. They take an input ray angle and height and calculate the expected output ray angle and height for different surfaces and components. I won't cover them in this video, but one of my advisors during grad school, Daniel Cote, has some really helpful videos about this. He also worked on developing a Python package for ray tracing. You should check it out. The links are below. Let's return to the ray diagram for imaging an object with a lens. To visualize the system, I have an LED matrix to represent the object. I'm also using a couple of mounts to place a plano convex lens near the LED matrix. We see light traveling in all directions around the object. When we place a card on the other side of the lens, we can still see the image formed, but this doesn't really look like a ray diagram. The main problem is that only a small portion of the rays actually hit the lens. The rest of them are vignetted or clipped, so they don't enter the lens. And it can be a nightmare in building real optical systems. We usually don't draw vignetted rays in diagrams, but we see them in real life so it's not possible to see those cones of rays that we see in ray diagrams. But there is a way to visualize these light cones. By adding apertures at two planes in front of the LED matrix, we allow only the light cone, 
that hits the lens to propagate from the source. I 3D printed these apertures based on the expected light cones from two point sources. Now, when I run a card through the system, we see cross sections of only the light cones that enter the lens and get focused down to a point. Just like a ray diagram, we've restricted the rays entering the system to make it easier to understand. If I move the card during a long exposure, we can actually see something that resembles a ray diagram. You don't need to work in optics to find these images pretty satisfying. Usually we don't see bundles of rays like this because the light isn't scattering off anything between the object and the optics. So the long exposures with a card are the key for visualizing light propagation. I've shown point sources so far, but what happens when the object gets very far away? From the perspective of the optical system, the rays from a point source become more and more parallel to each other. In other words, the light is collimated into the system. Displaced points are now represented as field positions with different angles of collimated light. Camera lens systems are usually modeled this way. Lasers are an extreme example of a collimated source. The beam divergence is incredibly small compared to a point source. Lasers can be simplified in ray diagrams as collimated sources. I've set up the lens and apertures to visualize a collimated beam. When I place a point source at the focal point of the lens, the output ray bundle is collimated. Here's a long exposure to visualize it. The beam diverges more than a laser, but you can see how confined the rays are relative to a point source. Flashlights are designed in the same way. In the first ray diagram I drew, the lens itself determined the cone of light that enters the system. But this is actually rarely the case in a multi-element optical system. The light cone is determined by an aperture in the system called the stop. Stop position completely changes the function and performance of the system, even for a single lens. Actually, one of the first major achievements in landscape photography was adjusting the stop position. When a positive meniscus lens alone images a scene, the aberrations are terrible. Aperture stops in general make the light cone entering the system smaller, which reduces the aberrations. But the field curvature is still pretty bad, which is a problem for flat 2D detectors. By adjusting the stop position, the field curvature can be further reduced so that the image is in focus on the sensor over the full field of view. Pencil of Rays has an awesome article on the evolution of this design. It describes some of the major innovations in landscape lens design and how they help reduce aberrations. The link's below. When I look around the apartment, I often think about rays propagating like in optical layouts. The image formation. When a glass gets placed down, I like to think about the overhead lighting. How many lights are above? The light sheets from a cracked door are cross sections of light from a source, like selected rays in a ray diagram. Ray optics is the simplest theory of light, but it helps explain so much of what we see every day. And ray diagrams are the way we illustrate it. Thanks for taking some time to learn more about them, and I'll see you next time.